Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Tian Yu from Terry Chiu Academy. Right now, we are going to do this question together. So, the question is pretty long. Let's read it together and break it down. There were 200 students in TCA Primary School. They were numbered from 1 to 200. Those with numbers, which are multiples of 4 and choir, those with numbers, which are multiples of 7, are in dance, and those with square numbers are in band. How many students are in none of these three CCAs? So, there's a lot of information in this question, right? I'm actually going to break them into sections for you. So this is the first section. Let's call this the choir section. The next section, up to here, let's call this the dance section. And finally, the third section, the band section. I'm going to start off this question by figuring out how many students are in each individual CCA. So let's start with the easiest one, which is, of course, choir, right? So number of students in choir. This one's quite straightforward. If they are multiples of 4, I'm just going to be taking 200 divided by 4. I'm going to get 50 students. So if you can imagine, right, the kind of students that will be in choir, they are like 4, 8, all the way until student number 200. All of these guys will be in choir. Now let's move on to dance. Number of students in dance. Same thing, I'm going to take 200 divided by 7 this time. I'm actually going to get a remainder. I'm going to be getting 28 remainder 4. Which means there's only going to be 28 students in dance. So as you can imagine, it'll be 7, 14, all the way until 196. The remainder 4 is the 4 extra students that wouldn't be, right? 197, 198, 199, and 200. They won't be in dance. That's why we have a remainder 4. Now finally, let's look at the number of students in band. Number of students in band. So according to the question, only students who are square numbers are in band, right? AKA like 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, so on and so forth. Now, from 1 to 200, if you do some calculation, you actually realize that 14 square is going to be the biggest square number that is lower than 200. If you try 15 square, you'll exceed 200, which is what we don't want. So, since we can only go up to 14 square, there's going to be 14 students who are in band. Does that mean we're done? Unfortunately not. You see, there are some students who are going to be overlapping, right? So now what we need to try to do is find those overlaps. So I'm going to find the overlap between choir and dance first. So number of students in both choir and dance. Choir and dance. And there's actually a pretty easy way to do this. I basically have to find a common factor between 27, sorry, between 7 and 4. And that number happens to be 28. Which means, if I take 200 divided by 28, all students whose number is a multiple of 28 will be in both dance as well as choir. This right here gives me 7, remainder 4 which means there are exactly 7 students in both choir and dance. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find the overlap between number of students in both choir as well as band. And band. So, here are the conditions. It has to be a square number and it has to be a multiple of 4. I'm going to start listing those numbers for you. They're actually 4, 16, so this is 2 square, this is 4 square, 
36, which is 6 square, 64, which is 8 square, 100, which is 10 square, 144, which is 12 square, and finally 196, which is 14 square. So as you can see, I have 7 students who are both in choir and band. Now, I need to find the final overlap, which is number of students in both dance and band. In both dance and band. So, how does this one work? They have to be both a multiple of 7 and a square number. In this case, I actually only have two possibilities. I have 49, which is 7 square, and I have 196, which is 14 square. So that gives me 2. We are almost at the finish line. What we need to do now is find the students who are in all three. So number of students in all three. There's actually only one, and that's student 196. So this kid is obviously over committing in way too many CCAs, right? We realize that there's quite a lot of overlapping of information going on here. So it's probably best that I draw a Venn diagram because that will really help me to visualize my information better. So this is what the Venn diagram is going to look like. I'm going to have three circles. This is how I'll label it. I'm going to label this as choir. I'm going to label this as dance. I'm going to label this bottom one as band. So as you can see the middle section, the one where all three circle overlaps is the one student that takes all three. Now let's look at the overlap between choir and dance. Choir and dance, there's an overlap of seven. But that seven also includes the one extra student right in the middle. So seven minus one, that's going to be six. Now we look at the overlap between choir and band. Same thing, right? We're going to have to take seven minus one because of that one kid in the middle. Six again. For the last overlap, we're going to be having 2 minus 1, and that's going to be 1. So I've already filled in 13 children for choir, which means out of 50, there is 13 that are in more than one CCA. So the people who are in choir and nothing else, 37. I'm going to use the same logic for the rest of it for dance, since there's 28 in total, but 8 of them are in more than one CCA, there's only going to be 20 here. And for band, I'm going to use the same logic as well, 6. So in order to find out how many students are in one of these CCAs at least, I'm going to add everything together. Plus 6, plus 6, plus 1, plus 1, plus 20, plus 6. This number is going to be 77. And we can finally answer our question. What did our question ask? Our question is asking how many students are in none of these three CCAs. 200 minus 77. That's going to give us 1, 2, 3. So, it's a pretty lengthy question as you can see, but by working out everything logically step by step, we'll get to the final answer. We have now completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye and see you again in another lesson. If you would like to learn more from these tutorials, please smash that like and subscribe button.